Today's show is all about this show, Axpona 2023. It's my favorite show. It's the first big show I've gone to since 2019, which was, for me, uh, this show, Axpona. But anyway, I'm going to tell you all about my experiences at the show, and I just want to say, well, <laughs> the people, you know, it's about the gear, but for me, I just love talking to the people, you know, the people in the business, the attendees to the show, fans of this show. I did so many selfies. It was, <laughs> I was going to say it's ridiculous. I mean, I just had, I love meeting you people. I spend most of my time talking to a camera and when I get to talk to people, audiophiles face to face and tell me about what they're listening to and what they're into and what they heard at the show that they like, it's just I don't know. It does for me. It doesn't get better than that, you know. So I had a great time. But I do have to say, and this is typical. This is typical for so many shows that I've gone to. That when I come back home and listen to my system, like, yeah, this is pretty good. And in this case, with this time, I didn't come back to listen to my system. I came back and I listened to some stuff that I'm reviewing, namely the Heaven Eleven Billy Integrated Amplifier and I was using it when I sat down to listen last night, uh, I was using it with the MagnaPan LRS Plus, which I've been talking about a lot lately. And I thought, this system, just the Heaven 11 with <laughs> the LRS, MagnaPan LRS, if this was at the show, this exact sound, I would be saying, this is good, <laughs> you know, so, wow. But the, I think this is common. People tell me all the time they come home from shows and they listen to their system and they're pretty pleased with it. Or they say, I got to up my game. I got to get better speakers or an amplifier or whatever, you know, so that was cool. Anyway, this show had a little extra buzz for me because I was going to do a one man, uh, let's call it seminar. And before I did it, it was Friday at 1145 in the morning. And before I did it, a couple of hours before that, I went by to look at the room. And the room was freaking huge. And I'm thinking, I don't know, can I fill this space? If there's going to be 50 people there, it's going to be kind of embarrassing. But it didn't, no, the room was almost full. And the crowd was definitely up there for me. And it charged me up because I was really nervous <laughs> about doing this thing. It's kind of my life and audio, that sort of thing. And uh, I was really nervous, although people tell me I didn't look nervous. Well, that's good. That, we shot a video of my talk and I'm going to post that in a few days. And for the cherry on top, Herb Riker did a talk and I shot that one myself and he was up for it. He was fantastic. Herb was working the crowd, <laughs> you know, it is. So it was a good time. It was really good. But as for the show itself, well, so yeah, there's 150 rooms, but if I got to 50 or 60 of them, that's, that's probably about what I did. Okay, now I'm going to get to the gear and tell you up front that one of the things I'm doing there at the show is looking for products to review. And as I'm describing these things, I'll let you know whether or not it's something I might review. It's, I've been doing this long enough to know that sometimes, yeah, I'm going to do that. And then for one reason or another, it doesn't work out. So these are the potential candidates that I will review in, well, over the rest of this year. To kick off my, uh, my roaming of Axpona 2023, I went to some MoFi rooms and I heard, very first thing I heard, this is just an accident, I didn't set out to do it this way, is the new MoFi speaker, the Source Point 8, the little brother to the Source Point 10 I reviewed last year, designed of course by Andrew Jones. Now, he wasn't doing a comparison side by side, but I would say, it makes less bass than its bigger brother, obviously, but it had a, a kind of a spring in its step that I really liked. And of course, Andrew, the rock star designer, he was doing his uh, dog and pony show and talking about the design, really good stuff. So I'm looking forward to that. And then right next door was Wharfdale. They are showing their new speaker. It's called the Dovedale. And uh, this is a large three-way speaker you know, in the mode of the Linton, but scaled up a lot bigger and it's much more expensive. And it is actually made in the UK and it was sounding, uh, let's call it sumptuous, really, really beautiful. And then right next door, 
Uh, Peter Madnick, who designs electronics for MoFi, he has a brand new fully analog uh, phono stage. And it does current source, it does voltage source, it's a very flexible design. I was listening to it. I don't remember which speakers he was playing, but anyway, it was sounding really, really good. Weiss is a pro sound company, but they also make products that appeal to consumers. And their new smallest DAC, this one here, uh, I definitely want to spend some time with that. And then this uh, company that I'm not that familiar with, but I am intrigued, it's called Fez, and they have a push pull. 300B amplifier. I mean, I've reviewed single-ended 300Bs up to this point, but this would be, if this actually comes to, comes to pass, will be my first push-pull 300B review. Nelson Pass wasn't at the show, but his latest design for first watt, the SIT-4, was there, and it was being played through a set of Cube speakers. That's the brand name of the company, and the model is the Jazz On. And it was very dynamic, very alive. These are very high sensitivity speakers. They're really beautiful. I love the red finish. So I'm pretty sure I'm going to get this one. Is, this is a high priority one for me, is getting my uh, ears on time at home with the SIT-4. Next up is uh, from a company that's new to me. It's not a new company. It's, they're called Clarisys Audio. And the speaker is the Minuet Neodymium. And it's a planar magnetic design. Really beautiful looking speaker. It's not that big. It's hard to tell in the picture. It's about maybe four feet tall. And uh, anyway, the room that it was in, I felt was really crowding the sound. I, could, I felt it was holding back. But anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued by the design. It's not one that is, I'm probably going to review this year. My next stop was Fern and Roby. I walked in there. And they're playing those, the smaller of those two speakers. It's called the Raven 2. The larger one is the Raven 3. And the electronics were by Linear Tube Audio, LTA. They were playing vinyl. And I was really taken by the sound. This, is a full, uh, this speaker has just one driver. It's a full range driver. It's beautiful sounding. It, it kind of sounds the way it looks. It's very um, real. <laughs> you know, it has this. It's not trying to be fancy or anything. It's just trying to get out of the way and let the music pass through. So that one is, is in the works. That's a likely, again, I can't make any guarantees. I should stop saying it that way. It's a, it's a product that I'm interested in reviewing. We will see how it goes. The next room uh, was shared by three companies that almost always exhibit together. Volte Audio, they make horn speakers. Border Patrol makes electronics. And Triode Wire makes wires and <laughs> cables. And uh, they made some great sound with this smaller, uh, Fulte makes some much larger horn speakers. But this one, which I think is called Raz, I should have written that one down. Anyway, it was great. And I definitely am interested in reviewing that speaker. I want to get back to reviewing horns from a company other than Klipsch, because I do a lot of Klipsch. And uh, I think the time is near. So that should happen relatively soon. The Linear Tube Audio Room was using the speaker that I have as my reference, the Pure Audio Project Duet 15. And well, I know this sound well because that's what I use myself a lot. And uh, they were making really good sounds. And I want to show you this picture of the inside of their 40 watt integrated amplifier. It's a, tr it's a tube amplifier, obviously, but it doesn't use output transformers. It was designed by David Burning. Anyway, really good sound. Great match between Linear Tube Audio and the Pure Audio Project speakers. And then I went to the Pure Audio Project room, and rather than duplicate what's already in the other room, they were using a Pass Labs integrated amplifier with uh, the Trio speakers, with the Pure Audio Project Trios that have two 15-inch drivers. And yeah, that room was a little bit small for those speakers, but it was, it was doing the Pure Audio Project thing, which I am obviously a huge fan of. Okay, so the next room I went to was MBL. Now, they're a German company famous for their omnidirectional speakers. And they look like nothing else, as you can plainly see. And uh, yeah, they were working. And it's interesting that even though they're omnidirectional and the room wasn't that big, the room didn't seem to be squeezing the sound. Anyway, 
These speakers are low sensitivity designs, very low. Luckily, MBL makes uh, great matching amplifiers for their speakers. There's, I think, thousands of watts. They're really big, really heavy. Anyway, I'm listening to the sound of the MBLs and thinking, nobody does uh, omnidirectional sound better than MBL. And what I mean by that is that the music, the instruments and the voices are completely, let's say, decoupled from the speaker itself. It's as if the speakers are doing nothing and the music is just there. But of course, everybody's like staring at the MBLs because they're so cool looking. But you close your eyes and the sound, the music is just there. So that was a great room. Strolling on the main level, I heard a sound and it turned out to be the Golden Ear T66 floor standing speaker. Now this is a brand new model. It has active woofers and a passive, meaning you use your own amp, for the mid-range and tweeter. And anyway, it was sounding very, very nice, really nice. And it has a new skinnier look than previous um, Golden Ear designs. I like the look. I really like the sound. I definitely hope to be reviewing that speaker in the next few months. The KLH Model 7, which is a three-way with a 13-inch, yes, yeah, not 12, a 13-inch woofer. Uh, I think I have a future with that speaker. It was, it was pushing its weight around, let's put it that way, you know. And yeah, the demo room was working. Uh, like I say, a lot of them, mm, not so good. This one was definitely firing on all cylinders, talking to the people there, and uh, I'm def they definitely have my attention. Moving up to the higher levels of high-end speaker design, I listened to, and I am going to be reviewing, this one's almost positive, and very soon, I think, the TAD CE1 TX floor, uh, uh, stand mount speaker. Beautiful, absolutely stunning build quality. It is designed and made in Japan. It was designed after uh, Andrew Jones left the building. And... Uh, just, it's a monitor speaker. It's big on clarity, big on resolution, but it does have soul. And it just looks so beautiful. I mean, the build quality is off the charts. So anyway, that I'm pretty sure will be here at least, not for uh, publication yet, but it'll be in the building, meaning here, um, probably within a few weeks. And that one, yeah, that's really, really special. Diptek is another company, a French company, that makes planar magnetic speakers. And uh, it's really stunning. Uh, it uses vertical and horizontal traces for the, for the voice coil of the speaker. Very intriguing design. Mm, not so sure that that's going to show up here on the channel, but they definitely got my attention. The last room was this one. The name of the company is Treehouse. They make open baffle speakers basically from slices of a tree, a very large tree. And this particular model has a um, field coil mid-range driver, um, really great sound. And the room, though it wasn't huge, didn't seem to crowd the sound. It was just basically filling the room with music. Very impressive, very dynamic, just effortless, effortless beauty. Yeah, that's how I would call it. Anyway, uh, that is it for today. Oh, yeah, with all of that, there will be. Even with all of that audio, yeah, I'll squeeze in an Audiophiliac viewer system of the day. This one comes to us from Gene Norman, the solo timpanist and principal percussionist of the Hamilton Philharmonic Orchestra in Ontario, Canada since 1971. His speakers are PSB Strata Gold. Subwoofer, Paradigm Reference, it's a 15-incher. Turntable, Riga RP3, cartridge, Ortofon Blue, uh, and the phono preamp is a black cube. There's a Pioneer stereo receiver in there, a Samsung CD DVD player, it's a BD1500. Cassette deck is Yamaha Double Deck K98. Headphones, Grado SR60 and Grado Wireless TV is a 31-inch Samsung that's rarely used. Anyway, thanks, Gene Norman. All right, we are back. My name is Steve Guttenberg, and it's true. I am the audiophiliac, 
And uh, as they say, accept no substitutes. <laughs> this is the real thing. And with that, I can say my work here is at last complete. Thank you so much for watching. And I really, really do hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye.